Welcome to TOTC's Rooted Edition. My name is Lisa Mackey and we're here with several guests today where we'll be discussing multiculturalism in Canada and how reggae music and culture impacts it. Um, hi everybody. How are you? Ça va bien? How would you say the reggaeton has brought multiculturalism in Montreal, like the music and how it brings uh, people together? Je te réponds en français. Mais oui. Question. Pour qu'on puisse avoir un petit peu plus de spécification. Et puis, euh, bref, euh, le reggaeton, ce que je me souviens quand ça a commencé. Euh, j'ai commencé mes débuts en 2004 comme promoteur. Et puis, euh, j'étais chef promoteur au 737 dans le temps. Je me souviens très bien que pour avoir un événement latino, c'était très, très, très difficile. Ouais. Et surtout, jouer des musiques latino n'était pas trop populaire jusqu'à l'arrivée de le fameux hit La Gasolina de Daddy Yankee. All about the gas. Hein? Exact. <rire> Et puis ça l'a suivi aussi avec euh, les hits de, de Don Omar. Ça l'a continué à évoluer, à évoluer de plus en plus. Aujourd'hui, ça fait qu'on est dans un marché que on fait partie du top 40 okay. réellement de, dans la musique, euh, de discothèque, radio, spectacle. Et vous, vous avez euh, d'ailleurs le meilleur exemple. Auparavant, Evenco ne bouquait aucun artiste latino. So, Aujourd'hui, on peut avoir du Mark Anthony, comme du J Balvin, on peut avoir euh, du Maluma qui vient Maluma, oui, c'est ça. passer cette année. Mm -hmm. Alors, euh, vous voyez euh, le développement de la culture au niveau de la musique latine. Mais il faut pas... Euh, faut vous sachiez aussi que ça vient aussi d'une essence du reggae. Tout, mm -hmm. tout ce que, que l'on parle du reggaeton vient du reggae. Ça vient également du... Euh, ça a commencé dans les débuts au Panama, mm -hmm. que ça l'est devenu euh, le Raga Murphy qui est venu mm -hmm. de Porto Rico. Mm -hmm. Et l'évolution a fait le reggaeton. Qu'aujourd'hui, on peut parler du trap et on peut parler un ça, peu... Ça, c'est la évolution, c'est ça? Oui. Ouais, et puis maintenant, on peut parler que la musique, probablement, n'est pas reggaeton, mais sinon du pop okay. urbain. Alors, c'est ça l'évolution qu'il y a eu, qu'aujourd'hui, on a notre place dans le marché. Ah, excellent. Ouais. C'est la même chose pour le hip-hop aussi, non? Ouais. <rire> c'est du trap et du drill. Puis c'est vraiment drill. ça. C'est nouveau yeah. stuff. Yeah. So, um, can you guys tell me a little bit about where you guys are from and how um, the culture might be a little different here if you had any um, issues with racism in the, the part of the world where you're from and how, how it affects you? Or would you say that it would be more of a, a race class thing rather than a racism issue if there's any like segregation at all? Well, uh, as I mentioned, I'm from Barbados, mm -hmm. and uh, I've been here for many years. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, during the course of uh, time, um, I did have uh, some uh, negative experiences uh, as mm -hmm. far as my race is concerned. It was more noticeable in my uh, in my uh, professional career. Okay. As an example, um, just to give you an example, um, I remember once um, I did a telephone interview mm -hmm. for a, a, a job. Mm -hmm. And um, I pretty much was told that the job is mine. I had three telephone interviews. Wow. Um, I arrived at the office, and um, the um, I guess it was the manager who came out, and he looked and went back into the office. Mm -hmm. mm. And uh, then he sent his secretary out to say, you know, I'm sorry, Mr. Drakes, but we found someone more suited for the position. In the meantime, I had spoken to him, say, the last conversation we had was like an hour before I arrived at the office. Wow. And nobody was hired, and the job was pretty much mine based on what he was saying. But when I got there, that was the change. Wow. And uh, I saw it again as well uh, in my, um, uh, at another company where I had a pretty good position in the mm -hmm. company. Mm -hmm. I wasn't yet manager, but I was playing a senior role. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Moving um, up the corporate moving ladder. Up the corporate yeah, ladder, sure. yeah. Um, mm -hmm. When there was no manager, I was... I was fulfilling that role. Mm -hmm. And uh, when it came time to hire an actual manager, um, I wasn't good enough, apparently. Wow, okay. I didn't have what it took. But yet I had what it took to, to run the department when there was no manager. So I saw that, my colleagues saw that as well, and they pretty much supported me on that. Okay. Mm -hmm. So That's these are a couple of uh, issues that I've had. In terms of my business now, Drake's Events, I mm -hmm. haven't had uh, any problems to date. Oh, that's good. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, you know, because you would think that being in something like event planning where you have to deal with the public and so on, 
you will uh, different experience personalities that. Right. for you sure. Know, oddly enough, it yeah. was only yeah. in my professional life uh, where wow. I worked before. Yeah, you have a background and, uh, in finance. I have a background right. in finance. Yeah. I have a background in finance, and uh, I know finance extremely well. Mm -hmm. And uh, but like I said, now I'm into uh, event planning. And as Greg was saying before, uh, I'll, I'll touch a bit on what he was mentioning before in sure. terms of what I think I brought, if you don't mind. Oh, not at all. Please <laughs> do. Please do. Elaborate. Before I, um, before I got into um, uh, management mm -hmm. at the um, uh, compliance level, mm -hmm. I actually started out in the financial industry in customer service. Wow. So being in customer service, you deal with a lot of different people. Yes. Maybe at that time, not face to face. But you get to understand characters and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. And that helps, mm -hmm. uh, you know, in my business when I'm out there dealing with people. Mm -hmm. And also when I became a, a manager and director at a higher level, I also had to do a lot of, um, a lot of presentations in large groups. So that built me up for what I'm doing now. Right. So I'm confident in what I'm doing right now. I go out there with confidence, I speak to people, and everything is terrific. And so I don't have any problems. I've never had an issue. My business right now is five years old, mm -hmm. and I've never experienced any racial issues oh. on the outside. It's, it's amazing. It's amazing. Yeah. So that's, uh, yeah. Well, they've locked out and you've locked up. And, <laughs> <laughs> and I think it has a lot to do with character as well, because sometimes racial issues come about uh, with people who are of a certain character right because if they reflect mm -hmm. that they might have an issue with a specific person then yeah it will happen yeah exactly but if you just look past the color barrier mm -hmm. and you do in terms of personality and so rather on, you do than business rather right. than mm -hmm. then it goes extremely well and that's what I've been doing and I think that's the reason why I haven't yet experienced uh, You're in the flow. any mm -hmm. any any issues uh, racially uh, in my business that's great. That's a, that's a good positive outlook, yeah. and being your own boss probably also helps too. You know, well, you def most definitely. decide what you guys want to do. Yeah. You know, and like, most definitely, yeah. for sure. Okay, well, that's a great answer. Have you or anyone you know been a victim of aggression due to hate crimes? Like, like, uh, like uh, I don't know. Picked on because yes. of race, yeah. What well, was well, race? Hate crime, not hey, because oh, of race. Oh, actually, it doesn't have to be. It could be a hate crime. <laughs> okay. It could be. It could be a duel, really. Um, so, so you wanted to me to the hate crime of this? Crime de, un, un, un crime de haine. De, de Discrimination haine. of any kind. Mm -hmm. Mais, mais la phrase que ça, ce n'est pas nécessairement, c'est pas nécessairement en lien avec la race. Ça, non, deux, les, gang, ouais, les gang members qui s'entretuent, c'est ouais, une ouais, crime de haine quand même. C'est comme regarder de près. C'est des hate crimes, parce qu'ils aiment l'un l'autre. Donc, dans votre ville, à Barbados, vous diriez qu'il y a une division entre les classes, comme la classe de classe, la classe de classe Oui, il y a définitivement une division entre les classes à Barbados, et je pense que c'est quelque chose que nous voyons in most of the islands. Everywhere. Uh, everywhere. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I mean, it's significant. I mean, you go to one area, you're going to see the style of houses, the standard of living, etc. Okay. And then you go to another area and you can see a complete contrast. Yeah. Yeah. And then there is somewhat an in-between. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So there's definitely a, there's definitely a, a class um, uh, issue. And like I said, not only in Barbados, but in all of the islands yes. uh, that, that, I, that I know of. Uh, in terms of um, what you wanted to ask me before about um, the, uh, in terms of any racism, etc., in the island, yeah. I will say that uh, racism exists all over the world. Yeah. So in the islands, is there racism? Yes, there is. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's as significant as, it, as we see it here in North America. Right, right. Okay, mm -hmm. and I think also the reason for that, I think, is because in the islands, I think we have more of a tolerance and more understanding of other races than they do in North America. I'm saying North America because it's with the I tourism right. and with all the different tourism, etc. Right. And I think that, that that could be it. But yes, it does exist, but not uh, uh, it's not as visible as uh, we see here. C'est surtout un problème social général dans le monde qu'on vit en ce moment. Mm -hmm. Le classisme, le, 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 les différentes classes sociales qu'on vit en ce moment, dépendamment. Mm -hmm. Aujourd'hui, on n'est pas jugé euh, surtout par qui on est, c'est surtout combien on a dans nos poches et euh, ton titre universitaire. Mm -hmm. et, euh, moi, je connais un million de personnes qui ont les meilleurs titres au monde, ouais. ils ont le meilleur portefeuille au monde, mais ils sont personne dans la vie, mm -hmm. dans le sens humainement. Et c'est ça qui arrive en ce moment, c'est pas juste dans les Caraïbes, c'est dans l'Amérique mm -hmm. du Sud, ouais, c'est euh, n'importe où où ce que l'on va, 
Euh, je pense que c'est la nature euh, de, de l'être humain qui, mm-hmm. qui, qui est un peu euh, l'éducation mentale à ce niveau. Mm-hmm. L'éducation... Euh, The soul education, I think so. Ouais. It's uh, completely wrong on that way. So mm-hmm. that's my opinion on that. Sorry about it. I don't want to... No, it's not good. No, no, no. Je voulais amener mon, mon point parce que mm-hmm. c'est pas juste euh, au niveau de comment on parle et on dit toujours euh, les classismes. Mais vous savez, c'est pas une couleur qui non. classifie non, en ce moment l'argent. les gens. Mm-hmm. Oui. C'est selon, comme je vous disais premièrement, c'est comme... On a beaucoup de gens instruits, mm-hmm. mais qui ne savent pas appliquer ce qu'ils vivent, comment est la vraie vie. En tout cas, je ne veux pas devenir trop philosophe non, là-dessus, mais désolé, mais, mais ce okay. qui arrive, c'est qu'on a beaucoup de lecteurs de Bible, comme on dit, mm-hmm. mais qui n'emploient pas la Bible nécessairement. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Alors, de quoi qu'on parle? So, je ne veux pas trop dévier le sujet parce que je pense que je vais trop élaborer sur quelque chose d'autre, mais c'est, je suis complètement d'accord avec euh, Roy et c'est, mm-hmm. c'est un problème mondial, ce, cette question-là. Moi, je, veux, je veux dire, moi, le, le racisme en tant que tel, ce n'est pas un concept auquel j'y crois vraiment à 100 Oui, mm-hmm. le, les, comment dire, les préjugés, ouais. j'y, j'y crois à 100 Il y a des préjugés partout. Mais question de... de, de parce que moi, j'ai été victime, mm-hmm. si on va dire, de préjugés de racisme par des Blancs, mm-hmm. par des Arabes mm-hmm. et par des Noirs. Ouais. OK? Fait que moi, on a tendance à, à pointer du doigt le Blanc mm-hmm. parce que historiquement, c'est le blanc qui a cette réputation-là. Mm-hmm. Mais on ne va pas se mentir, nos frères, ils, montent, ils démontrent du racisme envers nous-mêmes aussi. Là. Ah oui. okay? Et Parce que moi, en tant que, en tant que courtier immobilier, je rencontre plusieurs personnes, ouais, plusieurs ouais, types ouais, de, ouais. de personnes, des, des personnalités différentes. Je peux aller frapper à la porte, puis un monsieur blanc qui me répond, puis c'est, là, c'est l'amour, là, oh, non, non. puis il veut aussi, il veut, il a, c'est arrivé que le monsieur, le monsieur n'a pas voulu me serrer la main, je parle avant Covid. Ouais, ouais, ouais. Okay? Mm-hmm. Mais ça arrive avec des noirs aussi. Là ou qu'on me regarde, puis on ne veut même pas... Je ne suis pas prêt à dire que oui, ben eux, ils n'aiment pas... C'est, question, c'est une question de, de préjugés. Ils peut-être pas, ils peut-être pas aimé la façon que je t'ai habillé. Ou, bon, fait que le racisme, moi, j'ai beaucoup de difficultés avec ça. Je ne dis pas que ça n'existe pas, mm-hmm. mais je pense que c'est, une, c'est quelque chose qui est exagéré d'après moi. Oui, il y a des préjugés, il y a des gens... Les, on est humain, on ne va pas s'aimer tout le temps. Il okay? y, y a quelque chose que peut-être mon chemin, un cheveu qui est mal... Il y, y a plusieurs raisons pourquoi quelqu'un ne quelqu'un t'aime pas. Fait que, mais parler du racisme en tant que tel, je pense, moi personnellement, I think it's time for us to like, go beyond that. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yes, yes. Okay? Absolutely. That's, that's, that's my opinion. Parce que la communauté noire, je sais que la communauté noire, là, on, on, on reste dans un, dans un niveau où on n'avance pas. Parce qu'on est, on, on focus, culture, ouais, ouais, on se concentre sur le ouais, racisme. Ah oh, là, le, le, l'autre m'empêche d'avancer. Mm-hmm. Mais peut-être que si on prend un miroir, okay, on va, on va peut-être, on, on verra plus l'autre. On va voir vraiment la vra- le vrai problème. Mm-hmm. Puis on doit accountability. Yeah, yeah, yeah. C'est ça que j'ai à dire. Ah, je ne dis pas que le racisme n'existe pas, mais je pense que les médias, puis nous aussi, on, on rentre là-dedans, puis on exagère, puis ouais, ça devient quelque chose d'autre. Ouais, That's And I find also that among ourselves, among ourselves, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm going to say the black race. Right. I find that a lot of the uh, racism is also rooted by envy. Mm-hmm. Within, yeah. Yeah. Cultures. within the cultures, right. within the cultures, yeah, yeah. because uh, I've experienced mm-hmm. situations where if you're doing better than somebody else or you have something Money's that they evil. don't have, right. mm-hmm. you know, that is that in itself, if they act racist that's the root of the racism right it's like a habit that's rooted in there yeah. it's a habit yeah. Yeah. and uh, that happens a lot mm. it happens a lot mm. and it's, it's pretty sad to say because sometimes i look at um some of the other cultures you know and i see they're helping each other like, right. they're helping yeah. each other sometimes uh the they, Jewish live, they culture. live all together yeah. Yeah, until individually they're able to go on their own mm-hmm. right. they separate they uh you know they support each other mm-hmm. you know and i think that's one thing among us That's something that we are lacking. Yeah. It's a good we, start we, right here. That's something that we're lacking. I agree. You know, and uh, it's, it's, uh, that's what I'm saying. Uh, a lot of the racism among ourselves, uh, especially the West Indies living here, has to do with envy. It's, it's yeah. rooted uh, yeah. in the... Um, yeah. Growing up here, well, when I, when, when, I, when I was younger, there was this big issue with Jamaicans and Haitians not oh, yeah. liking each other. But the last time I checked, we're the same people, yeah. right? Exactly. Yes. Just a different exactly. island, like right? literally yeah. the same yeah. people. Yeah. Absolutely. Haitians and, and, and Jamaicans and, and the people from the island, mm-hmm. they hated Africans. Well, they thought Africans were like inferior. Mm-hmm. So we're going to call that racism? Another thing, mm-hmm. you go to a store. The store owner is white. The store owner will treat you a certain way, mm-hmm. right? If the person is white, 
automatically you deem, you, you'll say that person is racist. But a black person will do the same thing. You'll accept it. That's true. Mm -hmm. I noticed that. Mm -hmm. It's like a, there's a bit right? of a hypocrisy. Yeah. Yeah. So my thing is, this whole racism thing will prevent us from going where we need to be. Exactly. Yes. Yes. Yeah, but that's where it comes from. I'm going to come back. That's where it comes from. The question we're talking about in this moment is classism. Right. Pourquoi que l'Africain pas le laïcien et pourquoi tu te penses supérieur à l'autre? Parce que tu penses que probablement l'Africain a moins d'argent que nous autres. Il connaît peut-être moins que nous autres. Perception. Et perception, perception. et classisme encore perception. une fois. Mm -hmm. C'est que c'est ça qu'on devrait enlever de nos têtes finalement comme Ma, être humain. Parce que nous on consomme beaucoup. C'est ça les barrières. On, on consomme beaucoup de, des médias. Ouais. Okay? Puis notre, notre, la façon qu'on voit la, 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 la vie. Ok, les médias ont beaucoup à voir là-dedans. Mm -hmm. okay, on ne veut pas se mentir là. Ok, on est tous, <rire> comment dire, euh, c'est quoi le mot que je cherche déjà là, des gullible. On est, on est vraiment facilement mani mani Manipulé. 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 Ok, puis il y en a certains qui utilisent ça contre nous. Mm -hmm. C'est à nous de, ré de, se ré de, ré de, de se réveiller puis réaliser ce qui est en train de, en train mm -hmm. de se faire. Parce qu'on peut, us as a human race, okay. as a race. On peut We're faire one. plein de choses. Non, mais parce ouais, que ça, c'est encore là, ça, c'est un mm -hmm. jeu qui, que, mm -hmm. que l'être humain fait avec nous également. Mm -hmm. Les médias sont là pour diviser le peuple. Alors, euh, tu sais, c'est comme un peu les réseaux sociaux fonctionnent. Mm -hmm. Tu cherches une certaine information, mm -hmm. tu vas avoir toujours une certaine information. Mm -hmm. Tu aimes Trump, mm -hmm. tu vas avoir tout ce que Trump y aime. <rire> si tu n'aimes pas Trump, tu vas avoir tout ce que Trump mm -hmm. fait mal. Mm -hmm. Tu comprends? Mm -hmm. Fait que les réseaux sociaux sont programmés d'un sens. Les médias, les sociaux médias. Mm -hmm. Toute cette culture qu'on vit aujourd'hui est basée là-dessus. So, mm -hmm. si tu te, si, il faut s'instruire plus, il mm -hmm. faut lire plus, il ouais. faut, faut, faut s'éduquer tous les jours plus pour pouvoir arriver à avoir un, un bon jugement par rapport à tout ça. C'est une discussion que tu peux traîner pendant des heures, des jours, des semaines. Mm -hmm. Et probablement avec certains gens, tu ne vas jamais arriver non, à les entendre. Mm -hmm. C'est ça, ça, toutes ces barrières-là qu'on fait face ouais, aujourd'hui euh, au niveau de la culture, au niveau de l'information qu'on mm -hmm. reçoit on, et ouais. on perçoit comme être humain. Oui. Ouais. Non, mais c'est juste, justement, tu viens de résumer exactement ce que j'ai peut-être voulu verbaliser, mais non, tu l'as ouais. verbalisé mieux que moi, mais c'est vraiment ça, c'est vraiment une question de perception. Je veux dire, mm -hmm. si tu sais, aujourd'hui, la race noire, mais la communauté noire qui mm -hmm. sont aux États-Unis, au, au Canada, on est les victimes. On est victime, on est, on est comme si les, on, on voit les blancs comme des, euh, comment dire, des, des, op, des oppresseurs, puis nous on est des, des opprimés. Mm -hmm. Mais quand on regarde en réalité, est-ce que c'est le cas C'est mm -hmm. que nous, on, on, on est en train d'éduquer nos enfants parce que je, je vois des, je, je vois des, des, des familles noires, des, des grands-mères, des, grand, des arrière grand mères des mères qui disent à leurs enfants mais il faut faire attention parce que non, non, à cause de la couleur de ta peau. Mais c'est ça le problème. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. C'est ça le problème. Parce que là, déjà, tu mets, tu mets la, 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 la tête du, du jeune qu'il est inférieur. Comment tu penses que... Tu, comment how do you want him to move mountain if you system. already like... Yeah. Put, yeah. If, we, if we zoom away from the earth, mm -hmm. we see planets become small. Let's yeah. say. I, I think like, I'm just thinking like, hypothetically, mm -hmm. like what if there's another life form looking at the earth from millions of miles away? Mm -hmm. They're not seeing all the different cultures and different ch pigments and right, whatever. Right, right. They look at it as one culture. Yes. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I don't think we're going to be able to, like you said, mm -hmm. move very far until we figure that, yeah. you know, and bridge I, the gap. And like, yeah. I think, I think we, there's a you know? serious yeah. need, work that needs to be done in regards to that. Mm -hmm. regards to that. Mm -hmm. Because but, but I, I think, I'm sorry. No, 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 that's, that's good. Well, I think basically uh, if we can be standard racism issue. For sure, I mean, I, I, I think, great I think topic. What has to, I think what has to happen basically <laughs> is this, okay? Mm -hmm. Uh, there has to be a few stages here. Okay, first of all, it has to start in the home. Okay, yes. what has to happen basically is the parents in the home have to instill and teach their kids, you know what, people out there look differently. Mm -hmm. But we're all human and we should be treated as such. Yes. Okay, and yes. they should continue mm -hmm. to, to, uh, to instill that in the kids. Mm -hmm. Then once the kids go to school, that's when they're more exposed to more cultures, right. okay? So this tells me now that in school, they should continue with that process. Mm -hmm. As far as I'm concerned, um, there should be some time, I think, I think um, racism should perhaps be part of the school curriculum. 
true. Okay. To help people That's integrate into different. How, how different, to integrate? Yeah. Uh, you know how to uh, how to accept others. Mm -hmm. You know for who they are and not what contrast they look like. is a part of life. Exactly, you know? it's a part of for life. Sure. And you know the the way the world is is that we're 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 all different, mm -hmm. but we all need each other in order to survive and to function. Yeah. Okay. Sure. And I think these are things that need to be uh, taught in schools and at home. And I think once we start there, because because I know some people are saying, well, the government maybe should do more, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. But if the government is the one trying to do more, by that time it's too late. Yeah. There's one thing I disagree with, and there's one, I mean I'm gonna I'm gonna explain why I explain mm -hmm. to you why I disagree with it. Um, I don't think certain things should be taught in school, like the, the whole racism thing. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. that's our responsibility as parents to do that, because the teacher. He's from a whole different background. He's from a different world, right? And he has, he's, he's been exposed to whatever. You know, he could basically impose his beliefs that's into true. your child. And, and we don't want that, do we? Yeah. And that's what's happening right now, okay? Mm -hmm. in, in the schools, they have this thing called critical race theory. That's, that's the same concept. Yeah. Right. But it's yeah. being used, like, to, to hurt people, actually. Mm -hmm. To make black kids think that they're inferior. Wow. Understand, but I, I get the concept. If it was done so, properly, if, that's what I'm saying. If it's mm -hmm. done properly, maybe right. you know, maybe the process they're using is not correct. Right. But it doesn't mean that the school is not a good forum. But it could be. It could, to be but it could be interpreted. Difference. It could be interpreted wrong. It could be interpreted wrong. By you understand. So you, as a parent, yeah. there's no other person that can interpret. You know, that could basically mm -hmm. transmit that mm -hmm. better to, to, your, to the child than the mm -hmm. parent. Mm -hmm. That's the reason why I'm like, well, I think the school should take it, focus on. Like math, academics. academics. Mm -hmm. But this, it's sure folks in academics. I mm -hmm. agree with that. But maybe going back to what you're saying in terms of it being taught wrong in school and right. whatnot, maybe here is where everybody should come involved. Maybe maybe more questions should be asked of the general population when it right. comes to things like that, so that if all views, all views are put in the same pot, so right. things can be more guided. I agree. Maybe that's what it is, as opposed to a, a handful of people deciding, you know what, this is what we should teach for this course, da, da, da. Right. It has to get more people involved, so well, you get a, a wider vision some school of the programs. Solutions. Some schools have programs where it's like, um, they set up uh, events after school, like after school programs, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and you have different uh, children, different cultures that come together and they play games together. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. I found, for me, mm -hmm. I was like, as I was, when I was a child, I was put into a primarily all white school because my mother happens to be um, Canadian, okay. a white Canadian, mm -hmm. and she brought me to the schools that she went to. So it was a bit of a, a shock for me when I went in because right. people didn't know how to perceive me. But I noticed when we were, let's say we were in the choir mm -hmm. and stuff, we got to sing together and do something together. And that helped the other children see that, oh, we're not so different. Exactly. And, yeah. and yeah. it kind of, and, the, and racial, racial things did get brought up because I was one of the only people with pigment. Mm -hmm. And they're like, oh, well, you're different. And, and it's like, well, not really. We're just different, uh, different right. looking, but we have the same feelings and uh, love. And so it was neat that in that respect, I mean, but I think like in a way it's good to help children that are having issues with that while it's happening. And I feel like absolutely should be at the home taught basis. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. I think uh, it is a responsibility of some of the teachers to like, so that it doesn't get it doesn't get out of control. Let's say, you, for example. But I don't know. Now maybe really maybe, these, <laughs> maybe these activities that you were just talking mm -hmm. about, activities as such, mm -hmm. um, might not be a bad idea for most of the schools or mm -hmm. from all of the schools because it gives you a chance basically for play and, all different yeah. groups right, to be right. together. Mm -hmm and play and like you said it brings them to the re realization that they're not that different right yeah but see the, see but the way she explained it just now to me the perception i had was that that was a positive experience yeah it ended up being positive but yeah. in our community when that stuff like that happened mm -hmm. we tend to victimize ourselves yeah we don't want to oh my god they asked me how my hair i don't know how come my hair is like this but it's, <laughs> that's curiosity but that's us because i hear that on social media i see it on social media mm -hmm. Some people, get pissed. people get pissed. People get like, but 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 you should encourage that. Yeah. You understand? So that's that. that I don't know. <laughs> and that's another thing where you can feel out. You know, it's right. like okay, if it's like, does it have a racist connotation? Like if someone's. But kids. I mean, with kids, it's like just curiosity. Oui, c'est là où ce que ça vient. Je sais pas si vous avez déjà entendu euh, oui. qui disent que si on nous autres les êtres humains, les adultes. On serait un peu comme les enfants, mm. ça serait complètement un autre monde. Oui. Dans une tête d'enfant, il n'y a pas de racisme, il n'y a pas, 
et, et ils sont prêts à à, ils n'ont pas de haine euh, ils, se, ils se chicanent puis ils sont en train de se parler un peu plus tard ensemble ouais, ouais. il n'y a pas de remords a entre pas, eux autres même notre concept à nous, il n'y a ça. pas de haine entre mmh. eux autres même il, il, se, il, il arrive un incident mmh. deux minutes plus tard ils sont en train de jouer oui, ensemble oui. Mmh. et c'est comme ça qu'on devrait être comme traite humain et ça serait la la perfection totale au niveau de nos, de nos oui. sept ma euh, non, non. mindset. Oui, oui. mindset Excusez-moi. C'est ça. ça. Oui. Puis écoutez, un enfant avec. Euh, je veux dire, avec ça, il peut aller convaincre. C'est le super-héro. Oui. Il, peut, il, exactly. peut, il peut convaincre. Oui, oui. C'est Star Wars. Il va te faire un mm -hmm. monde imaginaire dans sa tête. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Incroyable. C'est ça, ça la vie d'un enfant. Ouais. Ouais. C'est pour ça qu'il dit si on serait un peu. Un, même pas un pour cent comme un enfant est aujourd'hui. Ouais. Ouais. Mm -hmm. Et on, on a éliminé au moins 90% d'accord des problèmes qu'on a sur cette planète Terre. D'accord. Mm -hmm. I can't argue that. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> yeah. I have no rebuttals. <laughs> Why is it that comedians mm -hmm. are able to make jokes of ethnicity mm -hmm. and if other people do it, it's perceived as prejudiced? Well, it's, it's about perception, right? Yeah. Yeah. So a comedian <laughs> is the whole conversation. The whole conversation is lighthearted. The whole purpose of it is to make you laugh, yeah. right? And human beings, we, we, we use mean things to tease each other all the time, and that's acceptable. But if, if it's being done in a way to hurt someone else, then the, 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 the reception might be, will be completely different. Exactly. And that's, that's just yeah. normal, right? Yeah. But in today's, in, today, in today's world, even a comedian has a hard time doing that. Okay, so let's not fully let's not fool ourselves here. The movements, okay. the whole Harvey Weinstein, yeah. the yeah, whole. So, yeah. you know, so because I I think I think that uh, going back uh, from when comedy was started, mm. I think there was this um, uh, general understanding that any ethnic jokes that mm -hmm. were said by the comedian mm -hmm. were for the sole purpose of entertainment and not meant to be taken seriously. Right. Okay, and that applies to all cultures. Mm. Okay. But uh, for someone to use the, for someone to use the same language as it were on the street, mm -hmm. okay, it's uh, it's taken as offensive. It's mm -hmm. taken as offensive, and mm -hmm. it, you know it, it creates a totally negative response. But for comedians, basically, I think it's a it's a known and accepted fact that anything that's being said uh, of race right. is uh, solely for the purpose of entertainment. And I think. Pretty much as what it is, and as Greg said, mm -hmm. even now these days, that's becoming um, a little more difficult. Mm -hmm. But I think overall, there's still a, a high level of acceptance from that point of view. True. I hope, and I hope it remains. As a question, uh, anyone can answer it. Um, have you or anyone you know been a victim of aggression or know of an aggressor? I've been a victim of aggression, I mean, due to a uh, um, prejudice. Yes, I have. Um, about, I'd say, 20 something years ago, I was in a, at a bar and a couple were looking at us pretty messed up, <laughs> pretty bad. And I, I glanced and I looked at them and I asked them if, if anything was wrong, and that was it. Oh, and it was on. They attacked us. I defended myself. Somebody called the, the police. The police arrested me. <laughs> oh, that's bad. But good thing, I had a. A very, uh, there, was, there was a witness that was, you know, that, that, that was willing to testify on my behalf that actually told the police he's a victim here, right? So that's one thing. I've all, I, I all, I'm not, it's, it's like not double whammy yeah, yeah, right I'm, there. <laughs> exactly. Wow, okay. But I'm not going to be a, a, a hypocrite. I was also an aggressor. Oh, okay. Yeah, of a hate crime, but that was due to ignorance. Mm -hmm. When I was young, I thought gay people were the worst people on the planet, mm -hmm. okay? And mm -hmm. at one point I saw two guys kissing and I attacked them. I did. Right. And I, it's not something that I'm proud of, but listen, we're gonna be, we're gonna be, we're being honest here. In Caribbean culture, mm -hmm. it's kind of yeah. like taught, mm -hmm. you know. Back in the 90s, that was yeah. a no-no. Yeah, and, music and, goes with it yeah, and all that. Yeah, exactly, and, and I saw that and yeah. it, I was triggered and I, I yeah. Well, yeah. I wouldn't have done it today, Well, but you know I what, did. humans grow. We, yeah. we, and I apologize we to those learn. two gentlemen and I hope you have a good, you know, happy life. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> um, have any of you been a victim of aggression or know anyone that's an aggressor? Me personally, I haven't been a victim and I can't think of anyone that I know okay. at the moment uh, who falls into that category. Well, I've never been a victim of that. I don't know, I don't remember any situation of racism, honestly. I mean, wait, I'm trying to think about it for a while, what could I do? If you could give me a quick experience of your business where you've experienced racism and why? No, but 
je vais, je vais répondre à cette question, mais c'est au niveau personnel. Une petite anecdote que j'ai eue dans le passé. C'était tout simplement, j'étais encore à l'étape de l'école au cégep. Et puis, euh, je faisais du télémarketing, comme un peu tous les jeunes ont fait, je pense, dans cette ville. On a tous passé un peu dans un télémarketing. Euh. <rire> Alors, euh, j'arrive dans la situation que, voyez-vous, moi, mon nom, c'est Jesus Perez. Jesus Perez. OK? Ah. So, comment je peux vous expliquer ça? C'est que quand que moi, je vends au téléphone et euh, une personne de cette ville reçoit mon nom et je dis, « Bonjour, c'est Jésus Perez qui vous parle pour vous vendre une assurance vie. » Alors, euh, bref, ça ne vendait pas. So, j'ai passé une semaine, une semaine et demie, puis j'avais aucune vente. Jusqu'à temps que je suis allé voir le directeur euh, de vente générale. Puis je lui ai demandé, écoutez, est-ce que je pourrais, pas, je pourrais juste changer mon prénom et nom de famille sur le téléphone? Est-ce que c'est réglementaire, tu sais, je veux dire? Mmh. Il m'a dit, oui, parce qu'au fait, tu peux mettre le nom que tu veux. Je ne sais pas si aujourd'hui c'est une faute, mais je vous parle d'il y a environ 16 ans de ça, mmh. 17 ans en arrière. Wow. Et puis j'ai pris euh, le nom de Jean Perrault. Que Jean beaucoup d'amis euh, m'ont niaisé beaucoup longtemps avec ça. <rire> ils m'ont niaisé, ils m'appelaient Jean. Okay, ouais. Jusqu'à aujourd'hui, il y a même des amis encore qui m'appellent Jean. Euh, puis c'est ça, j'ai pris Jean Perrault. Et puis tout d'un coup, j'ai commencé à faire des ventes, des ventes. Bonjour, ici Monsieur Jean Perrault qui vous appelle de la part de HBC, bla 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 bla. Monsieur Perrault, comment allez-vous Et voilà, j'avais l'oreille. Voilà. Le, wow. monde, le monde voulait me parler. Ouais. Mais quand je disais bonjour, c'est Jésus Pérez qui vous appelle. Pas le temps, merci. Ah, oh, wow. Tu comprends? C'était bon exemple. C'était bon ouais. la vraie ouais. des choses, puis c'est quelque chose ouais, ouais. que j'ai vécu. Et grâce à mon nom de Jean Perrault, ouais. wow. euh, je suis aujourd'hui... J'ai pu vendre. <rire> j'ai pu vendre. Mm -hmm. Mais j'ai... Tu sais, c'est fou, mais encore là, quand tu te mets à réflexionner et que tu as des enfants dans, dans un pays canadien ou nord-américain, tu y penses deux fois avant de mettre un nom à tes enfants quand ils naissent. <rire> ah ouais, ben ouais. Tu y penses deux fois parce que la culture, le classisme, euh, et vous le savez aussi, mm. plusieurs amis, toi tu es d'origine haïtienne, caribienne, puis vous le savez que plusieurs fois quand vous mettez vos noms mm. sur un CV juste pour aller chercher un, un, mm -hmm. <rire> un emploi, ouais. vous savez que vous êtes déjà catégorisé, ben, ah c'est un haïtien, ah c'est un noir, ah c'est un latino. Ben ouais, clair. Mm -hmm. Moi je vous le dis parce qu'avec mon épouse, elle s'appelle Tivetelina, imaginez-vous. Mm -hmm. C'est Europe de l'Est. Mais c'est pas Lina. Ouais. Vous comprenez, c'est vrai que, à ce que je veux en venir, c'est que c est, c est, ça a été très difficile pour elle de trouver. D'ailleurs, une personne normale québécoise ici, ils ne peuvent pas prononcer son nom. Ouais. Qu'est-ce qu'elle a dû faire? Ben, elle se fait nommer Lina. Lina. Ben That's ouais. it. Ben ouais. Alors, ça, c'est... Et ça, ça j'en ai parlé beaucoup avec des amis, parce que moi, j'ai quand même grandi à Montréal-Nord, j'ai beaucoup d'amis haïtiens, et je suis fier aussi des avoirs. Et puis, oui. vous savez, on, on parlait justement quand on était jeunes, dans la rue, quand on faisait nos CV et tout ça, puis on se disait, hey, c'est ça le préjugé qu'on fait face à tout le monde. Oui. Même moi, je suis latino, mais j'ai un nom latino. Oui. OK, et euh, oui. voilà, c'est... C'est à ça qu'on fait face, malheureusement. Ouais, si c'est pas ton ce nom, c'est ton accent. Mais <rire> et encore là, on ne peut pas généraliser non plus, parce que je connais du monde, j'ai des amis québécois qui sont fantastiques. Ouais. Euh, et c'est qu'encore là, c'est le niveau d'éducation que tu as chez toi. C'est comment on, tu, commences, tu, tu fais percevoir tes enfants la vie, mmh. le, le futur, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. comment, un peu comme tu, tu parlais tantôt, euh, hey, t'es noir, c'est parce que t'es noir, ça t'arrive, ça, tu sais, des choses comme ça. Mais non, 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 faut pas, faut non, faut pas non plus les mettre dans une situation où est-ce que tu, tu, tu vas les, comment on veut dire ça, qu'ils sont les victimes en tout temps. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Faut, parce que non, ça, ça, tu peux pas être victime. Faut les sensibiliser, ouais, ouais. Ça. mais en même temps, il faut pas les faire un brainwash disant ouais. que leur, leur victimiser non plus. Là. Ouais, c'est ça. Ouais. Ouais. Alors non, c'est juste ça, c'était juste, c'est que j'ai eu, une fois après que j'ai eu ma compagnie et que ça a évolué, tu mmh. es ton propre, euh, tu es ton propre boss, mmh. tu commences, as, ton cerveau commence à produire des choses différentes, des thématiques, mmh. et puis tu commences à avoir un certain mmh. follow-up, so tu sais, il y a beaucoup yeah. de monde qui commence à te suivre, mmh. euh, tes événements deviennent intéressants, tu commences à prendre une notoriété mmh. au niveau de l'événementiel, mmh. moi je vous parle personnellement, 
Les étapes ont été difficiles, mais il n'y a rien de donné. Beaucoup de fois, le monde dit Ah, tu es chanceux, tu travailles ici, tout ça. ça. Combien d'heures on a passé en train de, de planifier jusqu'à mm -hmm. minuit, une heure mm -hmm. Et le jour à 6 heures, 7 heures, on est déjà en train de travailler. Mm -hmm. Et euh, les problématiques qui viennent mm -hmm. une production d'événements, personne ne les imagine. Hein? Personne ne sait c'est quoi une vraie problématique d'un événement où -ce que tu dis Qu'est-ce que je vais faire Comment on va y arriver tu, tu sais de quoi je parle un peu, non? C'est mm -hmm. <rire> que, ouais, ouais. que... Non, c'est ça. Bref, la notoriété commence peu à peu. Et puis, c'est ça. Aujourd'hui, on arrive à... Avec les années, il faut être patient. Quand les choses sont difficiles, il faut juste donner du temps aux choses. Exactement, je suis d'accord à 100%. Ça se replace ça. Je trouve que les moments comme ça sont tellement définis. Quand quelqu'un est en train de... Vous pouvez sentir ce moment qui vous donne un look comme... I'm going to be proud of who I am, That's and I'm going to exactly. do what I want to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you guys are perfect examples of that. And I got to say, I'm very happy to meet you all. Well, yeah. <laughs> Same here. We're happy to meet you. How do we build realistic bridges between cultures in Canada? Communication first, tolerance. For sure. I can add a third word to yeah, that. Yeah, go ahead. Awareness. That's true. Do you have one? Moi, je pense que c'est plutôt euh, trouver la façon de montrer notre culture aux gens, montrer qui on est. Ouais. Et ça, on le fait bien ici au Québec, justement, avec un développement de, de festival mm -hmm. qui a surtout différents... Euh, un exemple, nous autres ici, le euh, TOTC, OK, vient pas juste amener une musique, sinon la nourriture. Il vient de montrer une culture au complet. Qu'est-ce qu qu que, qu qui est réellement les Caraïbes? Parce que nous, on a des références par rapport aux chanteurs, que c'est Bob Marley, que c'est... Euh, tu sais, il y a des références spécifiques dans le Caraïbe ouais. par rapport à les cultures, mais les ponts les plus efficaces, c'est de produire et montrer aux gens qui vivent dans cette ville le, le produit, le produit qui est les Caraïbes. C'est un 360 de qu'est-ce que c'est. En tout cas, moi, je pense que c'est de cette façon-là que les gens, les gouvernements, <rire> les, les, nos radios qui appuient ouais. et tout. Parce que quand on parle de Caraïbes, il ne faut pas oublier qu'on retrouve la République mm -hmm. dominicaine, on mm -hmm. retrouve le Cuba, le Porto Rico, on retrouve tous les restes. Tu voyez, vous, fait que c'est ça. Fait que tout ça fait partie. Et quelque mm -hmm. part, on est tous relationnés là-dedans. Mm -hmm. C'est comme ça que je pense que les ponts de ça, 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 sont faits. Et nous avons beaucoup de tools pour nous. Uh, in order to achieve things like that. Mm -hmm. For example, uh, as far as cultural events or to develop certain cultures mm -hmm. or to expose certain cultures, I find that the government is very supportive mm -hmm. uh, in situations like this. And maybe these are things that can be taken advantage of mm -hmm. uh, in order to uh, you know, promote our cultures or make, make our cultures more, mm -hmm. make it more, if I may use the word, more visible right. uh, to, you know, to, uh, to other cultures. So. That, well, that's what I think. That's my favorite aspect of socialism. <laughs> <laughs> right? right? There's actually cultural yeah. grants. I, I think that being in the business, that, <laughs> I also think that being in the business that we are in, mm -hmm. uh, people like us play a very, very important role. Yes, I, I agree. So too. In yeah. uh, you know, in uh, making our cultures uh, more visible, etc. We play a very important role True. in that because we deal uh, with the public, and it's how the public perceives us as well mm -hmm. that plays a big part in that. Because okay. we don't want to be perceived as oh. This guy is uh, from Haiti. Mm. Uh, I don't want to deal with because what you, the way you deal with your uh, with your clients, mm. you are basically uh, an ambassador for your culture mm -hmm. in Haiti. The way I deal with my clients, yeah. and they know I'm from Barbados, I'm an ambassador. Automatically. Automatically yeah, exactly. from Barbados. Absolutely. Same with yourself. Yeah. 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 And exactly. these are the things, this is why I'm saying we play a very important role right. uh, in situations like that. So, you know, everybody has to play their part. True. True the word in French is, um, what's, that, what, what's the word? Sensibilisation. Yeah, yeah. 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 Like yeah. That. That's it. Is our current situation creating new forms of discrimination within Canada? I think so. Yeah. I think so. Um, with the focus with the on the LGBT community, with like I don't know how many different sanctions. And yeah, exactly. Yeah. How many different what you call it sexual identities they have there? Right. Of course, that's division. Right. A man, just that one man could be could have ten different what you want to call it, uh, identities. Of course, that's going to create division. Yeah. The vaccine mandate, that's another, what you want to call it, that's a new type of, you Form know, it's, it's some Jim Crow it's stuff exactly going on. Right. That's some yeah. Jim Crow. Yeah. Yeah. 
you know, and, and, and for normal, regular people to, to, to go along with that, to me, it's mind boggling mm -hmm. as far as I'm concerned. Because history is history repeating itself. You understand? And us today in 2000, we're the most educated, you know, um, group of human beings ever. Yeah, right, right now. Right mm -hmm. now. Yeah. But it seems like we're not able to, to make rational decisions to actually understand our, our own like we world. we need a Godhead to decide. Right? And that, to me, that's, that's very worrisome. Because I, 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 I was under the impression that we were a lot more evolved than, than we actually are. Until COVID kicked in. And yeah. yeah. Until COVID kicked in. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, we're in trouble. That's so, so, yes, definitely. Cool. <laughs> in short. That's a good answer. Thank you. Um, what about you, gentlemen? Uh, I think uh, I agree completely with what I, I agree completely with what you're saying. Okay. I agree completely, completely with what you're saying because I also had the same thought. Right. Okay. In terms of uh, being more um, advanced than we actually are, and uh, as far as I'm concerned, during this whole pandemic, we've taken a step backwards. Yes. We've taken a step backwards. Okay, and uh, in terms of the division, mm -hmm. okay, uh, there's a division between those who are vaccinated, those who are not, those who do not want to get vaccinated, okay, and that's causing a lot of conflict between the two groups. Yeah. So that's another division right there that's being created. Yeah. Is okay? it better that we have this or not? It's like it's starting to seem like it's well, a well, that's just form it. Then that's just it. Yeah. And I think the reason why mm -hmm. that division maybe is coming about. Is probably mm -hmm. is from an education standpoint. Okay. Okay. There was not enough education put into the whole thing, the process. Whether whether it's good, whether it's bad, they have to give people. People have to be more educated in order to make a choice. Right. right. Okay. People are just making a choice on the surface. Okay. They have to be more educated. Can't take in order a fast choice these cannot, days. Exactly. Yeah. You can't do fast mm -hmm. choices these days. Got to really look into it. Uh, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so. something else that creates a division, which has always been there and probably will always be there, is uh, politics. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. Okay? There's always a division of, uh, of politics and uh, th there's no change. Yeah. The, the, mm -hmm. the way it's been 20 years ago is the same way it's been now. Mm -hmm. And I don't suspect that there will be a, a change uh, like, in the near future. I feel like the difference between then and now, uh, I grew up with like, my parents telling me, like, do not discuss who you vote for. Politics should be a private thing. Mm -hmm. But I find with social media and everything, and everyone's like a news broadcaster online, you know right. what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, that the politics, everyone's opinion, and they, they're, they're happy to share their views on it. And I find, for me personally, in my opinion, that I'm seeing a lot of conflict because of that. Because people mm -hmm. are like, you should vote for this. If not, you're that. There's yeah. like a far left wing, or right wing, whatever. Yeah, like who are they? The ones. It's, well, it's, it's the media. It's the media doing this, really. Because yeah, yeah. see, the division's always been there. Now they just put it in the, into the forefront. Mm -hmm. They they put a special, emph you know, emphasis on it. Right. Exactly. You understand? That's exactly. that's what it is. So now people are fighting each other over stuff that they they would just normally you know, discuss. Mm -hmm. Now mm -hmm. it's now it's an argument. It's like a topic right? thrown in. Right. Exactly. Go for it. Because see, now they're using they're using um, politics as like you know the same. It's the same as sports. People don't people like if if I'm a liberal. Mm -hmm. No matter how 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 bad my liberal my no, my liberal party's decision you is, have a political um, background. Yeah. Oh, what happened? Do you have a um, you used to be f formally involved in the liberal. Well, I was. I tried to, but that was a terrible mistake. Okay. Yeah. I, at one point, I was director of the Parti Libéral du Canada under okay. when um, Pierre Pettigrew was um, was the the. I forget. Anyways, he was in charge. He was that the was minister. Yeah, that was a, that was two thousand and four. Two thousand and four. Okay, wow. He was the minister of foreign of foreign affairs, yeah. mm -hmm. and I got involved. You know, ignorant. You know, na You're naive. Very real. I didn't exactly. I didn't, I didn't know. I didn't know better. I got involved, and then I realized. That's when I realized that democracy was just a myth. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. And that, my dear, I, it, it turned me off completely. I agree with you guys. It's the same thing. Yeah. We talk about um, in the other question. It about the, the media, media divide everybody here in mm. this world. So basically, I think you, you answer everything in what I'm thinking about, you know? So, <laughs> but another thing though that we didn't touch on, mm. which is extremely, extremely important here in Quebec, is the language issue. Oh, yes. okay. Now there's definite division with the language issue. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. And uh, you know, uh, and I find that it's getting worse as opposed to getting better. I remember back in the, excuse me, back in the day when I was in high school mm -hmm. and uh, CJAP and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, like there was a, an almost equal division between the English and the French right. in terms of communication you receive, in terms of the services right. that are offered, and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. But as you know now, we are in 2021. There's different requirements. There's yeah. completely, completely different right now. 
This so is new, to, too. To, yeah, to this a certain new. degree. Yeah. Yeah. Being an English person, mm -hmm. if you want certain communications and uh, services in English, you basically have to apply for it. Right. Yeah. You get you discriminated know, uh, against. Which is, which, is, which is really, really bad. But there's, no, there's certain options that are not available to some Anglo... Like, I feel yeah, more exactly. concerned, not so much for the people that are from here, as much as a lot of us are, we understand enough, right, right. Mm -hmm. but it's the people that are visiting. That are visiting? Like, or, uh, or, or, do they understand or, what's happening? Yeah. 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 Car crashes, yeah. things like that, yeah. you know? So that's my, my, more of my concern. Like, I think it's beautiful that there's like many different languages. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, exactly. one, that's something very beautiful about yeah. here. But at the same time, it can be a little dangerous at the same time if we take some of the things away, like you were saying. Oh yeah, for yeah. sure. And I mean, it has it has a very very uh, large impact mm -hmm. on new immigrants to this yeah. to this province. They're coming here. Right. They don't speak a word of the, of uh, they don't speak a, a word of the language. Mm -hmm. Yet, they have no choice but to accept services in French. Yeah. You know. You know, yeah. it's like us. It's like us going to Rome as an example, and we don't speak. Uh, we don't speak Italian. Right. Yeah. You know, we, we can't get around unless we have somebody there to speak for us. That's true. And so on and so forth, and that puts you in a very, very vulnerable position. Yeah. Yeah. But at, at the same time, I, I can I can see both sides of the you know of the the coin because it's their it's their culture right. that mm -hmm. we're mm -hmm. coming into. Right. Yeah. It's then, at the same time, we cannot expose. I mean, impose our own culture, you know. No, own, right. You know, we, are, we, you know, we just have to. If I go, if I move to, if, let's say, uh, a Canadian moves to moves to Haiti, right? Right. The Haitians would expect that person to act to try to, to you know, to try to understand. I understand. I understand that, but at the same time, you know, I think. It should be help. A yeah, yeah, yeah. More help available. It's yeah, it's to, true. It's good to have both. I think so. Like, if you're learning a language, it's like okay. If, let's say they're Eng if, if they're even English, because a lot of people come here. Let's just face it, don't know English or French. Right. Mm. So, in a way, it's like you know, for those people too. Then we have to have every language. You know what I mean? So at yeah. the same time. But if they don't um, speak a language, why why take them in? That's what that's I'm thinking. Like, shouldn't, 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 that, shouldn't that be part of the, um, what you want to call it, one of those um, criteria for, 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 to, for them to I, be accepted? I partially agree with you. Okay. When it comes to refugees, oh, well, refugees, yeah, refugees, when it comes to refugees, they don't right. speak any of the languages. So why should we turn them away? No, you don't have to. But you don't have to, though. But you could send them somewhere else where they, it'll be a lot easier for them to learn that yes, language. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, English is a universal language, right? So they come to Quebec. Just take them to Ontario. Go That's to, true. Go to, That's an option. Uh, distribution. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But uh, one thing I like, though, about uh, immigrants coming into Quebec mm. is I like the idea of them being uh, forced to learn uh, even the basic part of the language. Mm -hmm. Because if they hope to integrate right. and advance, mm -hmm. they will need to do so. Right. Yeah, so sure. some people see it as negative. I see it as positive. Good. Because if you want to advance yourself, mm -hmm. You have to integrate, right? And that's exactly what it does. But at the same time, while they're doing that, mm -hmm. okay, I'm speaking for the point of view of a person who speaks English. While they're doing that, there should be services also available to them in English. Yeah. yeah. While agree. they're pursuing uh, uh, learning the French language. I think it, it makes a yeah, culture yeah. rich with uh, bilingualism. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Moi personnellement, je peux te répondre à ça parce mm -hmm. que je suis directeur d'une école. Uh, je suis directeur d'une école d'opération. Ben, directeur mm -hmm. d'opération dans une école de langue. Mm -hmm. Alors, euh, un des processus, un des prérequis, c'est justement apprendre la langue française. Right. Mm -hmm. Alors, parce qu'on est au Québec, right. alors euh, le processus d'immigration même, mm -hmm. quand ils font après un certain DEP et puis qu'ils ont la possibilité d'appliquer pour une résidence, mm -hmm. ben le prérequis, c'est français, c'est pas anglais. Alors, euh, si tu viens à la province du Québec, oui, français, tu vas devoir oui. t'adapter mm -hmm. à oui, la langue oui. française. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Alors, si tu n'es pas d'accord, va t'en à Toronto directement, si tu veux ça, parler anglais. C'est une autre option. Et c'est pour ça, ça qu'il fait aujourd'hui qu'il y a beaucoup d'Indiens, mm -hmm. beaucoup de Jamaïcains. Il y a pourquoi il y a beaucoup de, comme ça à Toronto? Mm -hmm. Parce que, justement, les Arabes, où est-ce qu'ils viennent? Ici. Mm -hmm. Ici. Les Haïtiens, ils viennent ici. Ça. Les Africains, les Africains ça, francophones, ils viennent ici. C'est ça, c'est vrai. Ouais. Ouais. C'est ça. ça. Voyez-vous, le, le, le Caribbean Fest, c'est comme ça, la semaine mais, du Caraïbe. Mais tu vois, le Caraïbe, so, what is it called? Jump up? Or? The jump up to Caribana? Oh my God. Caribana, yeah. that's it. T'as vu jump comment c'est big? Yeah, ouais. c est, c est, moi, j'ai du monde qui voyage d'ici vers là-bas. Mm -hmm. Mais moi, je le comprends parce que lui, il a la nostalgie parce que lui, quand il est arrivé, le Québec était complètement différent. Le ah, Québec oui, était oui. très anglophone. Mm -hmm. Fait que lui, pour lui, il n'y a pas de difficulté de, de naviguer. Parce que mm -hmm. c'était anglophone, oui, il y avait du français, mais, mm -hmm. mais là, je pense que le changement s'est fait. Je pense, 
les gens qui voient ça pour plus pour, d'une manière problématique, c'est plus you know, les, les gens qui étaient là avant. Oui, c'est ça, oui. Ouais. Les gens qui étaient là avant, c'est comme, oh, c'est, c'est comme... Lui, lui, il parle comme un Québécois maintenant. Non, non mais lui, <rire> mais pour lui, lui, non, mais lui il, parle pour, il parle pour les autres. Parce ouais, qu'il y a plein qui sont là, c'est comme si pour eux, là, comme ça, oh, shit. Ceux qui n'ont pas pris le temps d'apprendre le français, on va dire. Mm-hmm. OK? Qui là, ça fait genre 40 ans qu'ils sont là, mais ils n'ont pas pris le temps d'apprendre le français. Pour eux, c'est difficile présentement, là. C'est extrêmement difficile présentement pour eux. OK? Ah, ouais, Et là, non, notre réalité c'est aujourd'hui, c'est quoi, c'est, que, c'est quoi qui demande tous les emplois? Le français. Ah. Français et anglais, ouais. c'est les deux, ouais. c'est pas un. Ouais, mais ça, Aujourd'hui, mais ça, mais ça, notre réalité n'est pas une langue. Non, c'est vrai, mais ça, ça dépend, ça dépend de l'entreprise aussi. Oui, j'avoue, mais ça dépend de... Toronto, il y en a... Toronto, on t'oblige à parler français non. dans un job non. Personne. Non. Québec, oui. Ouais. Parce que tu fais du télémarketing, tu dois être bon en français. Ouais. Tu, même si tu as un accent, tu dois être bon en anglais. Mm-hmm. Tu comprends? Mm-hmm. Et c'est comme ça, notre réalité dans cette ville. Ouais. Et c'est ça, le Québec. Mm-hmm. Probablement, peut-être pas à la ville de Québec, mais je parle plus Montréal. Ah, Montréal. Oui, oui. Montréal. Oui, oui. On, va être, on va centraliser plus l'idée. Oui. C'est Montréal. Parce que moi, j'ai grandi avec des, des amis italiens aussi qui jouaient avec moi au soccer. Oui, moi aussi. Puis leur problème, quand ils sont arrivés à leur emploi, oui. quand ils ont fait un CV ou trouvé un emploi, oui. « Ah, mais tu parles pas bien français, toi. Oui. » Ils disaient ça. Mais toi, le francophone qui a étudié toujours en français, c'est quoi qu'on te dit? Parles-tu anglais? Oui, tu parles pas anglais. C'est vrai. Mais qu'est-ce qu'ils font? Une entrevue ouais, dans les ça, deux langues, vrai, maintenant. Ils te ouais, posent ouais. des questions dans les deux ouais. langues. Mm-hmm. Ouais. Et si tu as une troisième, mais c'est bienvenu, tu as encore plus de facteurs. C'est soit vrai. l'espagnol, soit le créole. C'est vrai. Voilà. C'est vrai. C'est, c'est, vrai. c'est ça notre réalité aujourd'hui. C'est vrai. C'est vrai. C'est Entièrement raison. Thank you for joining us for Taste of the Caribbean's Virtual Shift Edition. This is our final episode. And I want to thank you, gentlemen, for coming out today. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for watching. And stay tuned for season three. Woo! Boy, I tell you, everyone. Sometimes it's hard to say goodbye, but we're not saying goodbye. This is just the end of season two of the Taste of the Caribbean's virtual shift tour. We've had some exciting times, saw some great performances, and you saw the cuisine. It's wonderful. We're going to be back with season three, a lot more happenings, and it's really, really not a goodbye. You're going to see more coming from Havana Resort. Many shows are going to happen. Taste of the Caribbean is going to make it happen. So make sure you follow us and continue through our next season and see what we got in store for you. I wonder where we'll be next. We will be somewhere in Canada. Send us an email. Log online with us. Let us know where you want us to stop in Canada. We'll see if we can make it happen. <laughs>